Hi and welcome back to One Step at a Time Farmstead. I'm Lucas and I'm so happy to have you join us on our journey. So in this video we are going to start brewing our first um, fruit wine. Join me as I take you through the process. First things first and that is to clean and sanitize all the equipment that we are going to use. I am going to use normal dish soap and hot water to clean and sanitize, just to show that you don't need any special products or equipment in order to do it. Dishwashing liquid or dish soap and hot water, perfect, just as good as anything else if you clean it properly. Okay, so firstly, my fermentation vessel. Make sure I get in everywhere. tight corners and everything.
Okay, the lid. This lid you'll see, I've got a submersible heater running through it. And that is just that when I do a fermentation in the winter time, um, it's to keep my water level at the right temperature to, um, you know, for the yeast to be active. Um, I'm not going to use it now. Um, but I just ensure that everything is clean as well. You don't need your submersible heater in summertime, but if you, it is advisable to put one in if you do it at winter time. Otherwise, if you can have your temperature at about 20, 22 degrees Celsius, I'll just have a pop up of, of what that is in Fahrenheit. But yeah, about 22 degrees Celsius um, to start off your fermentation. The moment your yeast starts working, you can switch it off because the yeast will produce its own heat. But it does help if it gets really, really cold, um, like freezing below zero um, in winter time. It does help to have a submersible heater within your uh, uh, solution. Otherwise, you can also just put your container on one of those electric heating pads. It's also very cheap, but I find that the submersible heater does a great job. <coughs> Also, just want to make sure that I clean the cable so there's no surprises. Okay, and that's it for the fermenter. The other equipment that I'm going to use is my bubbler, my tube cylinder, and my hydrometer. Just be very careful with that. And I might also use a scissor to open the packet of yeast, a knife, and a spoon to stir. With the hydrometer, just be very careful. Um, make sure it's clean and sterile. And back into the container you go.
clean. Uh, one more thing that I might use is just my measuring jug. Okay, so I'm just rinsing out the soapy water, or the majority of it. Okay, so we've got our equipment clean. And now and our work surface is clean. Just wanna dry up here.
Okay, and what I've got here is my pot of water that I boiled yesterday um, that I'm going to use. And the first thing that I want to do is to start activating my yeast. So I take about a cup of water. Perfect. I can put the water aside. And what I like to do when activating my yeast is to just put a dash of my uh, uh, product that I want to ferment into the wash as well. Um, the reason why I do it is as the uh, uh, yeast wakes up, it's already got some of the solution or some of the wash that I want to ferment in there. Um, and it will start feeding on that. Um, so then, okay, <clears throat> let's put it that way. You can, you can activate your yeast in just plain water. Um, but when you then add it to the solution with all those sugars and stuff, um, it might go, undergo a bit of stress. Um, or some might say that it will shock the yeast, so it will take time to actually uh, uh, start being active within your fermentation, because it first needs to adapt to the new environment, because you take it from pure water it's, and put it into a high sugar solution and you know it undergoes that bit of shock but if you wake it up you know if you wake up your yeast which is in a dormant state at this moment in dry yeast if you wake it up and it's already got some of that um, solution where you want to add it to in uh, the environment where it wakes up then you know it doesn't undergo that shock so it won't cause any uh, of flavors or smells. Um, I don't know if it's true. It works for me. Um, it makes sense to me. But if it's an old wives tale or not, I can't tell you. But that's <laughs> that's the way I do it. Um, so I'm not saying it is a rule. It just makes sense to me. So as they wake up, they'll have a bit of a breakfast ready for them. I also have to say that this packet of yeast is, I've had it for about three or four years. I see the best before date on here is uh, February, February, February. February, 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 Feb 2022. Um, so it will be quite interesting to see if it's still in a dormant state or, state or is it dead. 
but according to what I see, it's already starting to foam on the edges. So <laughs> seems to me like it's still alive. I just slightly want to, oh yeah, you can smell it already. I can tell you one thing, it's hungry. Okay, and we just put this aside for the time being and let them wake up. The second thing that I'm going to do is to take a gravity reading on on my juice to determine how much fermentable sugars or possible fermented sugars are in the solution. I want to add a hundred milliliters. Give it a bit of a spin to make sure that there's no air bubbles clinging to the side of the hydrometer and influencing the reading. But there's a bubble that went up now, so. Okay, and the reading that I get here is uh, I wonder where's my glasses. <laughs> so the reading that I get on here for the original gravity for my juice is 1.040 which then gives me the uh, potential alcohol by volume of about five percent if it uh, should ferment, ferment out completely Okay, so if you if we use it just like that, it would make an excellent cider, uh, lower um, alcohol volume. But wine is between eight and fourteen or fifteen percent. Some go up to eighteen percent. Um, so we want to bump up uh, the ABV of this. Um, Juice a bit. The sugar we want to bump up the sugar content of this juice a bit in order to raise the uh, uh, potential alcohol by volume to about. I'll say I'll be happy with about twelve percent um, because I don't want to put this yeast under strain, um, under stress. Um, 
So what we can do is to just add normal table sugar. Okay, so I have uh, an original gravity reading of 1.040 from my juice, which will give me about 5% of potential um, alcohol by volume. Now, perfect for a cider, but I want to bump that uh, alcohol volume up a bit to about 10 to 12% for it to be a wine which means I will add some sugar to the juice to form the must. That process we call chaptalization. That just means you add sugar to your uh, wash to bump up the uh, fermentable sugar um, content that is in there and after fermentation give you a higher uh, alcohol by volume yield in the in the wine. So my desired gravity is 1.090 which will give me plus minus 12% uh, alcohol by volume. Using the chaptalization calculator from Vino Labs website, uh, you just put in your current gravity, uh, your desired gravity and the volume of your must and it will work out how much sugar you need to put in. So according to them I need to put in uh, 1.05 kilogram. 1 kilogram and 50 grams. Okay. Um, I'll do the whole American imperial conversion thing somewhere on the screen. Um, you know with temperatures Celsius to Fahrenheit and kilograms to pounds. Um, I don't know why you don't use the metric system, it's so much easier, but fine, be weird, be the Americans that you want to be, <laughs> sorry, um, just, yeah, just be different, why not? So, okay, I've got a kilogram bag of sugar ready. I'm not going to add that additional 50 grams. Yeah. Why? Um, it will be close enough. So that I will add to my juice. So with the fermentable sugar content, you know, the uh, gravity of the juice being lower than what I expected, I'm not going to even need to add water. So I discarded my water and I'm going to use the pot quickly melting my sugar into the solution and then add it to the rest. I'm going to add the sugar to the pot. And this one that I already opened, I'm going to dump this two liters in here. to stir it through, maybe heat it up a little bit just to get that sugar dissolved. Maybe not even. Oh. 
Ah, I can smell the yeast doing its thing. Get that CO2 uh, uh, bread dough smell from it. So, yeah, it's active. You can already see it starting to foam. Uh, my daughter cooked last night, so excuse the oven being a little bit messy. Teenagers. And I was too lazy to clean up this morning. Well, it seems like all the sugar is dissolved. I actually didn't need to heat it up. It's actually still cold. But it seems like all the sugar granules have been dissolved. sure that this tap is nice and tight. We don't want any leaks. And carefully transfer it to the fermentation vessel. Up there, so a little tea, less than a teaspoon of sugar. Mm. 
the sumo just wash it out. Got all the sugar out of the pot. Okay, I'm splashing on purpose, and that is to get some oxygen in here because your yeast needs oxygen to start off but after it started you want to eliminate all oxygen And there we go. Okay, let's just quickly mix it through nicely and incorporate some oxygen in there so we can actually mix it quite vigorously. Okay, this is why I choose a vessel with a tap. Because now without any problems, I can take uh, some of this must. to take a gravity reading to see if we hit the mark. Okay, so it's somewhere in the table wine range I can already see. Mm. 
Now I've got a reading of a gravity reading of 1.082. Now so I've got a reading of 1.082, which will give me about 10 and a half percent potential alcohol by volume. Um, so let's just write, I'm happy with that. Um, I'm just going to document my, uh, original gravity. So this will now be my original gravity. Um, original gravity 1.082 equals plus minus 10.5% alcohol by volume. Okay, I document everything. I'll make a label and stick it on here uh, so that we can keep track of everything. I'll rather go with a little bit of a lower gravity and uh, alcohol. Okay, I will rather go with a little bit of a smaller gravity or um, of fermentable sugars, which means I will maybe get a bit, little bit lower um, alcohol by volume, um, but it won't put my yeast under strain and uh, not cause any off flavors and stuff like that. Also, I could add more sugar with water and fill it up to the 10 liter mark over here. Um, but I'm happy with this head space and I'll rather keep it, um, you know, with just the juice to get that full flavor um, of the juice instead of, you know, too much of a sugar sharpness kind of thing in, in the wash. I'm not going to distill this. If I distilled it, no problem, but because I'm making a wine for my lovely wife, I would rather keep it to the natural flavors. Um, as you can see, the yeast foamed up nicely. It seems to be nice and awake. They already seem quite happy. Um, I'm just going to stir this through again. and add it to my must. Now this is called pitching the yeast. Very scientific, no? One last thing that I want to do is just add about a tablespoon or so of chopped up raisins. The raisins will also just
uh, ensure that the yeast has, you know, all the nutrients and stuff to snack on. In a fruit wash, it's not really that necessary. Um, and I mean, you can go with all kinds of yeast nutrients that you buy. But again, I want to keep it as simple as possible. I remember my grandma when she made ginger beer. She would all, always add raisins. And before she served it, she would always remove the raisins from the ginger beer. And I could never understand why. And today I understand it's just so that the yeast has additional nutrients. I think that is enough you know, to, to live on. It's about a teaspoon, maybe a bit more. But you don't need a lot. It's not there to flavor the wash or anything. It's really just to add some nutrients. Although in a fruit wash, there is normally enough nutrients from the fruit uh, for the yeast to consume, although this is not f juice from freshly picked fruit or whatever, it's store bought. So I would rather, you know, put in a couple of raisins just to make sure. I don't like raisins. Okay, and lastly, we seal off and then over tighten it a little bit. We seal off our fermenter and I'm gonna oh there's already one I'm gonna put the bubbler in its place just need to put some water in okay so the bubbler fall to the mark with water to create the airlock. I think what I'll do is I'll just add some um, food coloring dye in the water so it's easier to, to see, especially on camera. Okay, I would have put some food coloring in the bubbler, but my wife uh, reorganized our pantry and she put it somewhere that I can't find it, but found some Jensen Violet in the, in the medicine cabinet. So I'll just use a bit of that. Or really a little bit of that. Let's see if I can do this. Ah, too late. Stained my finger. Ah, 
the stuff is potent. Um, I use a Jensen Violet on open wounds or um, something that our animals might get hurt. My daughter uses it to color her hair. Teenagers. I said, don't spoil. There we go. Now you can see a little bit better. Okay, now all that is left is to quickly clean up just as quick as we did when we sanitized um, to get all the sugars and stuff off of your equipment and to keep your wife happy. Don't leave it for your wife to do. Um, she might enjoy the wine, but she won't enjoy cleaning up after all your spills. Yeah, and then we just wait for this to start bubbling. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take it and put it on the shelf over there and let it do its thing. I am not going to use the heater though. Um, it's not really warm today, but I'm sure that it's warm enough for this fermentation to take off and I want to prove that you don't need any special equipment or stuff to make a nice table wine at home. So you see what will happen is as the yeast start fermenting um, the sugars in uh, our must it will produce alcohol and CO2 gas. The CO2 gas is heavier than uh, oxygen or the oxygen in the air so it will slowly start pushing firstly the oxygen um, and air out and leave a layer of carbon dioxide uh, you know hanging above the surface of the of the wash and that will also ensure that um, it won't ru ruin uh, your fermentation as the gases escape through um, our airlock or bubbler, like I used to call it, it will push those gas, uh, li the liquid up and start bubbling through. I didn't just do that.
and there it is, as quick and as simple and as easy as that, to make your wine and to clean up. It is now half past 11 in the morning, so as soon as I see any action on the fermentation, on the fermentation, I will record that and let you know as well. Okay, so our bubbler is close to bubbling for the first time, and it's now uh, half past, almost half past five. Let's see if we can see the first burp. But I mean, you can see that this positive pressure in our airlock at the moment, and it's keeping us in suspense. Okay, so yeah, during the night, the fermentation started going crazy, very active. You can see there was some foam build up and the bubbler build up, um, and eventually, yeah, it splashed through, and you could see the wall at the back got splashed with all the yeast activity there. So it's a bit of a clean up, but I'll quickly take the blood bubbler, just rinse it out, wash it, or I can take another one and put it on quickly. But yeah, fermentation is active and everything seems to be going quite well. Okay, I just took the, ferment the fermenter off of the shelf quickly. Um, here you can see how active leaf and foaming the yeast was. The foam pushed up basically oh, to the lid through the uh, um, airlock, into the airlock, and then came out on the side like that <laughs> and just trickled down onto the lid. Our active it really was, if you can see all that dye from the gentian violet that splashed against the walls. I've quickly got a wall to wash and clean the fermenter um, on the outside and replace the bubble, bubbler, the airlock. This is why headspace is important. I've got over two liters of headspace here in a, a, a fermentation of eight liters and it still uh, bubbled over. So what I do now is I'm just gonna quickly clean it. I'll have got some sanitizing wipes here. Just wipe uh, the lid off and I'll replace the bubbler with another one. Um, to take the bubbler out now won't really do anything. Um, it's not that I'm introducing air now because there is CO2 bubbling up from the bottom. So it actually pushes gases out. So air won't come in. So don't be too concerned at this moment. Luckily, it didn't spoil too much.
can already see the positive pressure and there's your burping, your bubbling. So not too much of an issue to correct. If I may ask you a big favor, please like and sus subscribe this video, share it with your friends, um, and any questions, please email me. I'll add my email address here at the bottom, um, or pop a question in the, in the comments. I would really love to be more interactive with you guys. Um, and you know respond to you it will keep me busier it will keep me a lot more focused um there are things going on uh you know in the garden garden is going off um perfectly well but yeah i really want this channel to grow the only way that i can do it is to ask you to please like subscribe share and Please, make, make some contact. I really want to get in touch. You know, just, just see it. Even if you've got some criticism, quite on there. Um, let me know. You know, speak to me. I, I enjoy having contact and a conversation with people and it's one thing if you watch the video but it's another thing if we actually interact and then i know at least i'm reaching somebody or even if i'm boring you to death tell me listen dude you are boring me to death um but at least then i know okay so thank you for spending the day with us um, I will move over into the second video now, um, so you can, you know, just follow on that, but I'll cut this video off here and say thank you for spending time with me. Um, it's a joy, it's something that I enjoy doing, and yes, may God bless you, and I love you. See you in the next video. Bye.